these are snowshoe hair. Um, actually, these are snowshoe hair. That's mountain hair. It's there to show the, the similarity between these animals. Snowshoe hare is an American beast. These are found in other parts of the world, including the UK. Um, they all turn white during winter. Um, the the colours um, of the... If you look at a snowshoe hare foot, I should go through that first. The piece or the hair that we want is this. And it runs all the, the full length of the foot, uh, from the heel to the toes. Um, and it's the stuff that sticks out there. Uh, we don't want this stuff at the side or the top. Um, actually, this makes good dubbing. But this is normal hair. It's, it's a hair hair. Um, it's very absorbent. Um, the and, and because it's been washed and prepared, this is quite soft. At the sides, it becomes a bit harder and a bit more... Um, you can tell that it's for wear here, and it's mainly a, a type of guard here. Um, now, what I do to prepare these is um, I shave away a lot of the hair at the side so that all I'm seeing there really is the, the type of hair that I want. And then I'll, I'll eat away at that, or I'll nibble away at that with a pair of scissors, taking out tufts as I need them, uh, like this. These show the different colours that you get. Uh, these are natural and haven't been dyed. Um, this one is almost pure white. If you go into the, the under fur, is almost pure white as well. Um, this one, obviously, it's it's a sort of buff colour up here and a, a dun um, the the base. Um, so it's a slightly different period of the, the year when that's been called. Um, this one is similar to, to this. It's grey underneath and it's this um, sort of tanny colour at the tips. Um, and the, this is similar. It's actually whiter, paler than, than this one. This is a true snowshoe hair. This is a mountain hair. The only hair that we need is this stuff on the, on the, on the sole of the foot. It's a bit coarser near the, near the toes and a bit softer towards the middle and the heel. The stuff that I prefer and the stuff that I'll use first is in the middle here. Um, so, when I was researching for this, what I, what I came across was um, these, um, which is, this is a, it's, it's sold as a, a Patagonian hare's foot. Um, it is a brown European hair, uh, and this is the natural colour. They dye easily. They have a similar texture of hair on the foot. Um, they're more the pelt is more of its brown colour on top. Um, it's not water repellent on the foot. Um, however, if if any of these are treated with floatants. Uh, the powder floatants take really well on these, and there's one or two other types of floatants work pretty well too. Um, I happen to prefer the, the what's called fume silicate, the, the powder. Um, things like Frog's Fanny and Hunt's do one as well that I use. This makes a good substitute. It's cheaper. It's much more readily available. Um, it's also available in colours, uh, some of which are useful and some of which are less so. Um, but the proper snowshoe hair is this. I would actually include the mountain hair because it works the same way. It has the same properties. Um, so that's the introduction. I'm now going to set up and, and um, finish a fly with a snowshoe hair wing. I've got a curved hook in the vise. I'm taking on my thread. This is going to be a version of Bob White's uh, snowshoe hair emerger, S-H-E. It's very similar to the deer hair emerger, just replace the deer hair with snowshoe. I'm using the thread as an underbody, I'm taking it back to where I want the, the dubbed body to end. Then I'm going to bring the thread back to where I want the wing to um, place. Um, 
this is a quick, well, relatively quick and uh, easy way of um, producing a fly. Bob calls these these this sort of fly ammunition, so it's it's not meant to be a um, an exercise in in fastidious fly tying. It's quite the opposite, really. So my dubbing is a mix of hare, uh, squirrel, and a bit of rabbit. Nice and messy. Um, Actually, very messy. <laughs> um, I'm just tightening, this, tightening the dubbing on there, and I dub back to the end of the thread underbody, and then remove the the rest of the dubbing. But I'm not using, and I bring the thread back in open turns as a rib uh, to where the wing will be tied in. Um, Bob makes a thing about makes a point about the, the length of the thorax, so I hope I'm doing it justice and I'm leaving enough space for the thorax. Snowshoe foot, pulling out a tuft, um, which comes with underfur at the base, get rid of that, it's the short stuff. And then I'm going to turn it round, once I've cleaned out the, the underfur, turn it round and I want to get rid of some of the guard hairs. Um, so I just gently ease those out. I, I don't want them all out, but I want most of them out. Um, and it's the softer, finer, crinkly stuff that I'm going to use as the main wing. Now I don't tie in the butts on this. I um, leave them exposed. I might trim them. I measure it for, I position it for length. Tie it down with a few turns of thread. And then I'll, I'll trim the, the butts because this looks a bit long. And that becomes part of the wing. I can post this wing. I'm not going to do it in this case, but I can post around the wing at this stage um, to make a fly that sits a bit deeper in the water. Um, all I'm doing now is building up a, a dam of, of thread at the base of the wing. And then I'm going to build a, a dubbed thorax onto that which will finish off pushing the wing back so it sits uh, more upright. Same dubbing. I'm putting it on maybe a... I, I don't actually wrap it onto the thread any thicker, but it'll it'll be... Um, the thorax will be thicker than the, the body. So it goes in tight as possible in front of the wing and as close as possible under the wing. You see it's pushing the wing up. Um, and then I'm compacting that dubbing in the thorax with with thread. I'm not let. I'm not. That's not a. Um, that's not the volume of the dubbing. That's the, there's a lot of uh, tight uh, material in there. And then a little bit more dubbing just to. Finish the effect. Again, the thread's going through it to compact it, make, keep it tight. And finish off with the head. Um, and put finish. Uh, snowshoe's not, uh, it, it's, a, it's a relatively hard hair. It doesn't flare the way deer does. Um, it, it spreads out because it's crinkly. So you get this messy profile. You can see the overall shape and the, the, the way that the wing sits. Now I would apply a floatant to that wing, just to the wing, um, and that will float um, quite set into the water. Nice fly. Uh, 